I'm Darren. I'm Derek. And, and this, this is the Double D, D Podcast. Hey, you got it then. I got it this time. <laughs> Super excited for this interview. It's been weeks in the making. Uh, before we get to that, though, this upcoming weekend, Saturday, Friday, Saturday, best damn wrestling show on Friday in Middletown and Saturday, <laughs> Cleves, Armageddon and Cleves. Super excited for these shows. Um, be there or be a circle. Be there, be a circle. Uh, be there, be square, actually. Be um, a circle. Really excited about the show. Let's jump into some match announcements real quick, just because we literally did this the, the review mm-hmm. of River City Wrestling and Aurora on Sunday. Oh. And since Sunday, it's only Tuesday, the day we're recording this, there's been more match announcements. Yeah. We knew it was going to happen, but this time we're on it, Venom. Mm-hmm. Try to get us. We got you, man. So I wanted to get these before we get through. So obviously, best damn wrestling show ever, Friday, September 1st. 2600 Titus Avenue, 2600 Titus Avenue, Middletown, Ohio, 45044. <coughs> Door is 630, Bell 7. Uh-huh. Women's Division match, Shauna Reed versus Casey Clay. We've already talked about that match. Yep. And Zero Gravity Division, Matt Taylor versus Dirty Daxi. We've already talked about that one. And the newest additions, these are big matches. And that's why I wanted to jump into them right away before we get into Huge. anything about the interview. Huge. It has something to do with our interview, too. Mm-hmm. September 2nd, Battle on the Border returns to Cleve for Armageddon. Super excited. Two cage matches. The first cage match features two rivals who also happen to be from Cleves. And that is a zero gravity division. Jaden Jett versus Justin Xavier. Super excited for this match. Yes. And we will talk about that in just a second. But before we do, the second match is going to be a grudge match between Shane Douglas and Brandon Day. Maybe Let's we're actually going to get to see Go! Something. I'm not, super... Not them running all over the place and... I mean, listen, it's always <laughs> fun to watch people run all over the place. Mm-hmm. People getting their heads shoved in freezers. And getting counted out. <laughs> the counting out's not the fun part. <laughs> Who are you leaning towards in this match? Well... Because I'm telling you, listen, Shane Doug... Here's the thing. Brandon Day keeps saying, I want Shane Douglas to return to the old Shane Douglas. And I think it's one of those things where it's like, don't, you know... Be careful what you wish for. I think Shane Douglas might hide some stuff underneath the ring. Well, there's going to be a cage. Yeah, Under the ring won't matter too much. Oh, yeah, true. That's the thing. It's like... He's going to come out weapons blurring then. He's just going to throw him in, throw him up, throw him mm-hmm. in there. I have a feeling he's going to use some weapons. I mean, Shane Douglas... He wants the old Shane Douglas. He's going to get him. Right. And Shane Douglas <laughs> being encased in a cage. Listen, I mean, I got to go Shane on this one. If you want yeah. the old Shane, you're going to get the old Shane. And you don't... Yeah, he, when, and once he finds out, he don't want the old Shane. Absolutely. That's, That's a bad idea. for what you wish for. So super excited about that match. That's in Cleves. But the match that we glossed over just for a second because we are interviewing, as you can see by the title of this episode, Russell Actiful Bland. Fun mm-hmm. fact about Russell Actiful Bland, he was our second interview ever. Technically, first interview ever outside of Denim. He was the first one. Denim was the first. This was the first interview set up. Denim said, you know, here's your first interview. And so it was really, really cool to get back to our first interview Kind of a full circle moment for us where we realized how far we've come. And now, you know, super excited to have him back on since his return with Kick Door Promotions, yep. which includes Jaden Jett, Casey Clay, and Storm Garcon. So it was really exciting to have him back. But Russell will be involved in a cage match on the outside, nonetheless, but still involved, where the title will be on the line mm-hmm. Jaden Jett versus Justin Xavier in a cage match. These two guys have a long history with each other. We go in it. In the interview, so I'll save you for that because you got to watch the interview, listen to the interview. Oh, yeah. It's a great interview, always is. Russell, listen, best manager outside of probably Bobby Fulton, right? Bobby Fulton's a legend. Can't really say that he's, you know. Uh oh, you're discounting somebody. I, well, David. Uh huh. Yeah, David. <laughs> uh oh, you're listen, discounting man. somebody. Listen, man, he's <laughs> no David. David Barnum Specter is a great manager as well. I mean, there's no doubt. But I'm just saying, we're interviewing. Inter- inter- listen, we're interviewing him. I got to talk him up. No, we don't. Yeah, we gotta talk him up. We gotta make him look good. We gotta, we gotta you know, we gotta say good things about him. He's li- he's watching. He's listening. He's right there. But lying is not the answer. It's not lying. It's just we gotta promote this. Fair Got it. All right, we're good. Russell Act Full Blade, one of the best <laughs> managers. One of the best. No, seriously though. Seriously though, he is a great manager. So much fun to watch. Uh, although he does cheat all the time, we hate cheaters. Yeah, on the show. He's never by the book. Um, and at this time, he can't be a cheater. But right. Well, you know, here's the thing though. I mean, remember Denim. 
you know, got stapled in the face because of outside interference, even though there was a cage around him. That was because of the Army of Destiny. So, I mean, True. just keep that in mind. Russell, I'm sure, has a plan. Unfortunately, we don't have any big scoop as far as it comes to that. But this is a great interview where he talks about since he left, he had a brief uh, stint away from Battle on the Border. His return, he talks about the kickdoor promotions manage, uh, not manager, he talks about himself a lot too. Yeah. He talks about the uh, people he is managing, the, the members, if you will, of kickdoor promotions. And then we talk about the preview, we review, we do everything in this show with him. We review. And we <laughs> do. I don't know, I was trying Dude. to figure out. <laughs> trying to figure something. I was trying to figure something. We do view. What? We, what do, we do view. We do view. Um, anyway, so it's I'm very excited for the ma- uh, for for the shows this weekend. What the hell's a do view? Very great. I don't know. I was trying to do, I was trying to come up with something and I and I lost my train of thought. Well, I think we need to just get to our things before we go off the rocker again. <laughs> so before we, before we do the interview, it's been a long day. I had work. You know, I'm, I'm tired. Uh, great interview though. Make sure you stick around for it. But if you want to follow us on Instagram, the double underscore d underscore podcast. You can follow us on TikTok, the Double D Podcast One. We can go live, and we have uh, kind of a busy weekend this upcoming weekend. Yeah. Some busy weekends coming up. We try to fit a live in at least once a weekend. Okay. So make sure you follow us on TikTok for that. You can follow me on Twitter, DJ Dub Zero Zero. Tweet about wrestling mainly, and some <sighs> things, uh, some other things also. I'm boring. I'm sorry. I'm no, to I work this. today. I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, we both work today. We work, you know, it's tired. Hey, listen, man. I know podcasting is easy. Yeah, I know. It's so easy I can fall asleep during it. <laughs> it's probably more entertaining. There are people that do that on TikTok, fall asleep on live. Yeah, they make a lot of money doing it, too. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, W.GG. Great energy drink. We need that right now. We need W as well. Yeah, we W would be good, just not Great in their cups. cups. <laughs> just not in their cups. <laughs> Great cups. <laughs> W.GG. Head over there. Use code Double D Podcast. That's D O U B L E D P O D C A S T. <laughs> to get something off your order. We don't know yet because no one's uh, used it, so use it, please. I mean, I get stuff for a discount because I'm, you know, a content creator. We're and, content creators. So and we you get can, stuff too, free. though. You can, too. We're trying to give you... We don't know what great. the discount is, but no, no you'll cra- find out. No <laughs> crashes. This is an energy drink that has no crashes. You, you, We reviewed it. It's good. So make sure you try it out, man. It, it, it's... I'm sorry, my, my watch went off. It's a lot of... It's, a lot of, it's good. good. That good Monster and Red Bull and Rockstar, I'll make you crash. Yeah, they make it crash, and ultimately it's not as good for you. This is a little bit healthier for you as well, and it comes in a lot of flavors. Links down in the bio below or in the show notes, so make sure you check it out. Your turn to do promotion stuff. Did you do our link tree? Our link tree's down there also, yes. Our link tree. So if you want to, oh, that's a good point. You're right, good point. (laughs) For those that are listening, Double D Podcasting Crew on YouTube is how you can find us. If you are watching us on YouTube, make sure to subscribe, comment, like, and hit the bell when you subscribe so you get notifications when we go live. Also, if you're on your phone, I found this out yesterday, so this is a good thing I found Ooh. this out. If you're on your phone and you click the bell, you have to go to your settings and turn it on. It's automatically, I think, off, hmm. so you have to turn it on. So make sure you do that as well. Um, and if you're listening to us or if you're watching us and you're like, hey, I'm going on a car ride, you're like, hey, this weekend, Friday, mm-hmm. Saturday, if you want to re-listen to this interview or if you want to re-listen to our review of Aurora and... Uh, uh, River City West, sorry, if you want to, if, River City Wrestling, if you want to re-listen to that, uh, if you go down to the link below our link tree, we'll have where we're available. We're available on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, we're on some other things. Make Spreaker? Sure you to, Spreaker. Make sure you go down below, you can click the links to find that. Uh, we also have a Facebook page, it's a Double D Podcast. Okay. Um. Double D Podcast. One day we'll be professional. It's one, two, three, right? No. Our Facebook is Double D Podcasting Crew. Yeah, Double D Podcast Crew. It's like YouTube. It's like I would have known that. Double D Podcasting Crew. Well, you're happens. supposed to run the Facebook page. Yeah, well. But he doesn't. See how that plan. He does <laughs> But hey, go give us a follow. Give us a like. Oh, yeah. Or whatever it is that you do. Yeah, I'll post a couple times. Yeah. Um, we also have an email. Double D Podcast at... 123 at gmail.com. Podcast 123 at gmail.com. Yep. Um, and if you just love me, add my snap, Darren, 11345678, and I also do a DJing company. Hmm. And we DJ everywhere, affiliated with the, with the Double D Podcast. 
phone number is 812-212-1675. Or if you really want to, you can just get a hold of us on the platforms that we already have to for me too. Absolutely. So make sure you're there. Also, go over to Battle on the Border Pro Wrestling on Facebook and BOTB Brigade on Facebook. Become a member of both of those so you get match notification or match you know card updates. You can get the address linked to the trick, uh, tickets, which mm -hmm. will be in the description and show notes below. So if you haven't grabbed your tickets yet, make sure you head, excuse me, head to the descri description. Hey, make sure you head on down to the description. Now you're here and get your tickets now while you can. All right. Now on to our interview with Russell at the Fool Bland. All right, so if you could please introduce yourself to everybody. Uh, if y'all ain't know who it is, it's Russell at the Fool Bland, the ultimate wingman, the CEO of what is now known as Kickdoor Promotion. Thank you for uh, coming on, taking this time. Sure, you're a busy man running Kickdoor Promotions. Um, let's go back a little bit further. We've had you on before, and in the between that time and now, you've had a little bit of an absence in Battle on the Border. And I just got to say, we were super psyched to see you back when you came back. It was really exciting for us. What was that time in between? What, what was the absence for? Well, see, that's actually not none of your business. Okay. But because I'm doing the interview, I'm going to play along, and I'll let you know what the deal is. There was things that was going on in the office that I didn't agree with. Mm. Everybody knows I don't like Denim. He don't like me. Mm. So what? There's certain pushes and certain favors getting done behind the scenes, mm. and I didn't appreciate the treatment that I was getting as the longest-running manager at Battle on the Border, mm. the most successful manager at Battle on the Border, and nobody can disprove that. I've won every poll that I was ever involved in and I've managed champions in every in every division except for the hardcore division. And that's because I don't like getting blood on my clothes. Yeah, understandable. So what was it that compelled you to finally make your return at Battle on the Border? Because Darren was the first one that pointed you out. I was fixated on the Jaden Jet match. And he was the one that tapped me on the shoulder and said, it's Russell, it's Russell. And I, we, were, we were shocked to see you back. What was it that finally brought you back? Well, um, needless to say, Denim does what's best for business when it comes down to it. Okay. He reached out to me, and that made me kind of lean toward coming back. Mm -hmm. But the cherry on top was Jaden Jett. Mm -hmm. I've known Jaden since he started training. Nobody really pays attention because I don't run around bragging about my acquaintances or none of that type of stuff because it's nobody's business. Right. But I've known him since before he got into the ring to wrestle. So me and him have a relationship. Mm -hmm. And if you remember, right before I stepped away for a minute, yeah. him and another person were in a group that I was managing called the Marquee Players. Mm -hmm. So we have a history, we know each other, and he knows what I'm capable of doing. He hit me up and said he needed a little assistance and holding on to something that he had near and dear to his heart. And I decided to go ahead and, you know what I mean, help a brother out. Right, right. So to go back a little bit further, too, during that time that you were gone, during that absence, what were you were you working on anything? I mean, were you getting your mind right? What were you what were you doing during that time? Because you said kick door promotions. Were you starting to get that you know the foundation for that laid out too? I see. What my job is as a manager is to build up wrestlers and get them exposure. And at that point in time, there was no talent at Battle on the Border that I was really interested in, piqued my interest, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So. I went around and traveled and saw what I could see, and I helped a couple of guys in a couple of different places, win a couple of different championships, and I finally decided, you know what, I need to go back home. It's a spot to be filled. There's no real manager that's showing up every show, whether it's a Friday and a Saturday or a Saturday and a Sunday outside in the sun, yeah. but me. That's very, that's very true. Very true. So, 
Jaden Jed, obviously, uh, we know that you, I mean, this might be a controversial, I don't know how you're going to react to this one, but, you know, the, let's just say that there's some backhanded ways to win matches uh, that you have, you've seemed to utilize during these, you know, during these matches here. Jaden Jett, obviously cheating against Avery Hertz, I believe it was, in, in your return with the chalk. I mean, is this kind of what we're expect? you know, you know, is this what we're supposed to expect from kick door promotions? I'm going to tell you now, you don't know what to expect from kick door promotions. Like I said, when I was in the ring and I reintroduced myself, I came here and I'm putting together a team to do exactly what I said. And we taking over battle on the border, whether we got kicked the door in or they let us walk in peacefully. And basically, they ain't letting us walk in peacefully. So we coming to take what we want, and we doing it by any means necessary. I mean, so if that means some quote unquote backhanded tactics, like you call it, yeah. so be it. I mean, we said this. We we re recorded a review of the show that took place on Aurora and in River City Wrestling a couple days ago we said you have to kind of respect the fact talking about Jaden jed here for a second you have to respect the fact since he's won the zero gravity title he's defended it constantly you may not like the way he does it but he does get the, the job done and he's a consistent you know he, he wins i mean he wins all the time now he unfairly. does well unfairly maybe but he still wins now he has an up well, why, why do you think i picked him back up as a client I why mean, do you think i'm back rolling with him you know what I'm saying? We done spent the block a couple of times together, and I know what kind of heart he got. That's why, if you notice, the whole team that I'm building right now, it ain't no big body guys or no huge, giant, super Oprah women. Whoa. I'm getting the smaller wrestlers because I know, just like me, they got bigger heart than most of these big, overswole wrestlers that get in the ring and get blown up within three to five minutes. That's I know they're going to fight. That, that, that is fair. So, you actually, you mentioned Kick Door Promotions, but uh, for those who are watching who don't know Kick Door Promotions, would you like to explain the members, introduce them to people? Okay. Kick Door Promotions, of course, the leader is me, the ultimate wingman, Russell, act the full blame. Mm -hmm. The first person I signed, we're going to do this in order, yeah. was Jaden Jett. He walked in as a champion. I didn't even have to sign him and build him up to get that shot. He walked in as a champ. And we got pushed up to the main event as soon as my name was put into the mix. Mm -hmm. Avery Hurt, he'll even tell you. Right. Thanks to me, he got a main event match. Okay, yeah. I mean, we're big fans of Avery Hurt's on this show, so I mean... We'll have to talk to I'm him. I'm not. Oh yeah. Yeah, we'll have, we'll have to talk to him. See how he. How do you feel about Avery Hertz? I mean, real quick, not to not to interrupt the the introduction of Kick Door Promotions, but what do you think about Avery Hertz? I mean, I I got a baseball bat with his name on it. Whoa. That's what I think about Avery Hertz. No respect, huh? So, so does that mean you guys are slightly nervous? So, like I was saying. I don't want to talk about dude no more. We can talk about something a little more sophisticated, <laughs> like the rest of my crew. You know what I'm saying? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. The next up to bat, of course, was Casey Clay, even though I didn't manage her until last as far as my return. Mm. And, of course, she is the prettiest woman at Battle on the Border. Right. And she's one of the baddest women, too. And that brings up number three, which is Storm Garcon. Mm -hmm. That's my niece for all of y'all that don't know. And I ain't gonna take no disrespect for my niece. You will get dealt with. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Those are my three right now. I'm cool with those and I'm working on something right now that I, I, I gotta get some paperwork drawn up on and I haven't quite sealed the deal yet. But once that happens, Y'all know because it'll be happening in the rain. Okay. I mean, can we get any, any hints, any clues? No, not really. Man, I was hoping for a big scoop. <laughs> you never get any scoops in the show. Yeah? Well, 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 a hint at things. Never been big. I keep trying to tell y'all. I keep trying to tell y'all. 
everybody else that interviews me. I'm not one of these bad guys in a comic book or on a cartoon, and I'm going to sit up there and tell y'all my plan so y'all can just predict it and somebody can stop me. That's not going to happen. Okay. You have to watch me like you watch TV. You know what I'm saying? Right. You can either choose to pay attention and see what happens. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Or you can sit back and not pay attention and get left. That's fair. I mean, I can't even argue it with you there. It is um, Can't argue with you there. But journalistically, I mean, not that I consider us journalists, but I mean, you know, we were hoping for a big scoop. Just a little slip up, like, yeah. signing this. Bro- oh, sorry, oops. You know, that was what we were hoping for. Yeah. I, I'm going to tell, tell you one thing. I'll tell you one thing about this, this said person that I'm trying to sign right now. And it's just the fact that he requires a little more than just me to handle him. Ooh. That's a good one. I like that. <laughs> now we'll be thinking about that for weeks. Oh, yeah. However long this takes, we'll be thinking of it until it happens. We're not very good detectives. Speaking of being detectives, now, you know, you know, you said it earlier, you're not a fan of denim. And there's been this masked man that's been running around attacking denim. Attacking, you know, now he's with lead better trying to, I guess, take over battle on the border. And I'm not pointing fingers, but what I am saying is, is that kick door promotions and the mass man do seem to have some common interests. We asked Jaden Jet when he was on about whether or not he was the mass man. And he so I'm, I, he was very upset with us. I'm not going to try to step on toes here, but I am just saying, do you know anything about who this mass man could be? I have no recollection of the event in question. Hmm. I don't know. That seems that seems a, it seems a fishy answer to me. It seems a bit of a fishy answer to me. But I'll take your word for it. I can't. I can't do anything else. I don't want to. I don't want to accuse anybody. You know, of anything they didn't do. But it just seems fishy. Mass man running around attacking denim. You don't like denim. You have Jaden on your side. I don't know. Uh, this is kind of a little suspicious. Uh, we'll, we'll move uh, on. Um, okay, check this out. Just, just, just to set y'all mind at ease, everybody that knows me, and as long as I've been a battle on the border, I don't hide nothing I do. Okay. I don't deny nothing I do. I own up to whatever because I'm proud of what I do. That's that's that is fair. That is true. So, do do you have any fear that the masked man's maybe putting in his own group together to take over? Man, I don't know what dude's doing, but all I know is as long as he stay out of our way, he cool. The second he swerves over in my lane even a little bit, he gonna have problems that he don't want to deal with. Okay. I like that answer. That's good. I, I, I'm rooting for you all the time over some, like you said, someone who's scared to take up for the actions that they're putting forth. I mean, wants to hide behind the mask. Yeah, can't be doing that. No. Cowardly. Yep. Now, let's I mean, go back now, the to the mask part. The mask part, I, 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 I tend to agree with. Because, I mean, if you're going to do dirt, you don't want nobody to know who you are. He's doing dirt right now. So, of course, like, he's playing a smart role. Like, That's you don't true. walk into a bank and rob him with, bear, with your face bare. <laughs> yeah, like, who true. does that? That's true. That's a good point. Very true. I don't know, man. We're kind of cool with denim. So, I mean, you know, a little bit, little bit upset about the Y'all look like y'all probably cool with denim. What is that supposed to mean? Exactly what it means. Like, <laughs> oh. I, I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna keep an eye on y'all because <laughs> denim is a he's a shifty guy. <laughs> hey, we're we're. I, yeah, well, I promise <laughs> we might be cool with them, but let us listen. I mean, we've had John twice. Granted, you kind of did demand to come back on. Uh, so I mean. Yeah, then I'm sitting up bragging about this and that and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's easy to win when you're in control of the game and you set yourself up. That's a good point. But when you're getting it out, but it's different when you're getting it out the mud. That, I mean, yeah. that's a good point. Hey, like I said, I, I, I understand completely. So, going back to the Aurora show that just took place a couple weeks ago, we'll start with Saturday. Scarecrow, Jaden Jet, that was the match. 
what was your game plan going in? You know, how how did you feel about the match? Because you, you had a match, if you, if, you know, Jaden Jet won. Next day, you guys were going to have a match. What was your th thought process of having two matches back-to-back -back days? What was your thought process in that match? And how did it go for you? I mean, did it go to plan? That, that was another set up to test his steel, just to see how tough he really was. Mm -hmm. And he proved to me exactly how tough he really was. And I'm proud to have him as a client and call him my little bro. Right. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, underhanded tactics used in that match. No big deal. Not, not doesn't matter. Like you said, win's a win. I don't even know why I mentioned it. Sorry for mentioning it, really. You know what? Since the trial is over and I, I, I can't, you know what I'm saying, I can't get punished for the crime no more, yeah, I hit Jericho <laughs> with the baseball bat. <laughs> and I choked him on the road. Because I don't like Jericho. He's creepy. He, well, he is a little. He need to go back to Oz. He changed. Last time, last time I, I had dealings with him, he got tossed out of a battle royal, and he got mad at me for being out there shining, clean in the suit, and he came chasing after me. Mm -hmm. Right. He tried to soil my. That's part of the reason why I don't wear suits no more. You can damn near blame it on Scarecrow. Yeah, that's that's that's. You know how hard it was. Running from his crazy ass <laughs> in a three-piece suit and dress shoes. Oh, I, I can imagine. Yeah, that's that's, that's hard. I, that's terrifying, really, when you think about it. Because like you said, he's a creepy dude. I don't blame you. I very much enjoy his wrestling. Yeah, he's a great... He's creepy, though. He's a creepy dude. There's no doubt about that. Great wrestler, great performer, but a little creepy. So, then if we... Uh, I don't take nothing from his skill, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's definitely... He's, a vet, he's earned his stripes. You know what I'm saying? And, of course, that was part of the reason why I, I had devised the game plan just in case things got out of hand. Right, right, right. Hey, and it worked and it worked perfectly. I mean, like I said, we don't have to like it, but there has to be some level of respect. There's no doubt about that. So if we flash forward with, with Jaden uh, on Sunday, the next day, real quick, uh, Eric Smalls, I mean – I saw, you know, this match come through, and I was really excited to see. I've never seen a match like this before. We were sitting over there, and we were we were watching. Do, were you guys discounting Eric Smalls? You guys were kind of laughing. Jaden was getting down on his knees. I mean, what was what was what was going on there? Did you just just didn't expect any? No, no pun intended here, but big things from Eric Smalls. No, nah, and I hope Denim didn't pay full price. He better have got half off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I don't know if Eric Smalls is watching, but just in case, I I set him up for that. That's my bad. I got to be better as an interviewer. I got to be better. That was my bad. Yeah, exactly. But that match, I mean, I mean, let's be honest here though. Eric Smalls, he shocked us. I mean, there is an obvious size difference. He gave Jaden a run for his money. I mean, were you were you expecting that, or were you shocked? I was expecting that because during my time off from Battle on the Border, I, I took a little vacation, went to Tennessee, and while I was there, I linked up with one of the guys that had a hand in training me and helping me out in the business, a bit of a mentor. I'm not a name dropper, so I'm not going to say but I got linked up with the best seats in the house at a micro wrestling show and got to meet some of the micro wrestlers. I saw how they work. I saw how hungry they are. Yeah. I understand what they got going on and what they're trying to accomplish. So I already knew it was going to be a little bit of a fight with Eric Small. Right. You're just doing you're just some, some mind tactics, doing the laughing at him and Jaden getting down on his knees and just trying to get into his head a little bit. And Jay won, didn't he? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, he won. I mean, you know, underhanded tactics. Uh, so well, yeah, underhanded well, we, yeah. And we ain't spinning the block on that one, neither. What's that? I said we ain't spinning the block on that one, neither. <laughs> In other words, that means I don't think he's going to be getting no rematch no time soon. Well, you know, who is getting a match, though, coming up here uh, in Armageddon, I believe it is one of the cage matches taking place at Armageddon September 2nd in Cleves, Ohio, is Jaden Jett and Justin Xavier. These two have a long past with each other, former tag team partners at one point. I mean, what's your thought process going into this? It's going to make your tactics a little bit harder. 
going See, into this match. With, with, with this guy, you know what I'm saying, I, I, I'm a, I got to sit back and I still got to do a little bit of research because it's hard finding a match that I can watch that he's involved in all the way through. Mm. He's, wow. a, he's, a, he's a little bit boring to me. He's like all, it, it, it's, it's all meat and no potatoes. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Where's the seasoning? Like, dude, and he, he couldn't, he couldn't leave Jaden just boots, man. Whoa. Dude is a bad mother lover, and Justin, he, he needs to go somewhere and sit down, because after this match coming up, he's going to be doing just like his namesake and crying a river, because he's <laughs> not getting that title. Right. I mean... I, we're big Justin Xavier fans. Yeah, yeah. we've had all. We've, we, I mean, we've had Jaden on. We've had Justin on. So we usually. I'm not saying we're, we're biased, but we kind of are. We've had somebody on. We kind of root for them. Man, he still, he still plays at the arcade, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, that and you got. We ain't, play, we ain't playing no games that kick door promotion. <laughs> Only reason I got an Xbox at home is so I can watch TV. Right. That makes sense. I get it. You got to be a little bit nervous because you know they have, like wrestled with each other and they right. kind of know each other so I mean he could have a kind of an idea on how yeah. he can approach this match and potentially win that title ever, has, he, has he ever wrestled him in a match where I was his manager sure. that's, that's the question that, that's the factor and the question you should be asking and thinking about that's very true no, that is a good point and it's something See, we're he, keep he, doesn't, he doesn't know what I've caught Jaden Jet. He doesn't know how long we've been in communication with each other. Right. I could have been had a hand in on him winning the zero gravity title without me even being present. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I mean, it's interesting. I don't know. What's he think about Avery Hurts always trying to get that title from him? Avery Hurts is just thirsty, man. He wants some attention. His mama ain't hugged him enough when he was a baby. <laughs> I was like, because I noticed um, uh, River City Wrestling. River City Wrestling, he was standing there and doing a lot of talking. He did not seem happy. Yeah. He did a lot of talking, and he didn't do a lot of winning. Yeah, I mean, hey, you can't argue that. That's yeah. good. That's a good point. And he's had multiple chances now. Yes, I, we were big, big Avery he, Hurts fans. He's had opportunities though. Yes, he, he might could get a match with um with Storm or maybe Casey Clay. You know what I'm saying? Right. But as far as Jaden Jet, man, come on, bro. I agree. I, I agree. He's his league. So that actually is a good uh, transition into. Back going back to Aurora now. Now talking about Super Oprah. Seems like Super Oprah and Kick Door Promotions have had a little bit of a problem. It started on Saturday in Aurora with Storm and Super Oprah in a match together. Now, unfortunately, that did not work out for Kick Door Promotions. Although you did, Storm did have a, a great debut in Battle on the Border as far as in ring performance went. It was a great, my favorite match of the night or of the day. Uh, but walk us through that. I mean, what was what? How did this Super Oprah rivalry start, and then you know, go into that storm match too? Because I mean, although it was a loss, it was a very impressive loss, which you know, it was well, any consolation. There was really no rivalry there, other than Denim decided he was going to be funny because I told him, "Hey, I got a couple of female clients that I'm signing, and they need a match." Right. He says, I, I got the perfect person for him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He didn't want to divulge who it was, so I was shocked when I found out that it was Super Oprah. Mm. And yeah. honestly, a lot of people don't know this. The very first match that I ever managed in the very beginning of my career, first time stepping through those ropes into that square circle, it was a match against Super Oprah. Hmm. She sexually harassed me, and I ain't forgot about it. Yeah, that's that sounds on brand. That does sound on brand. So that that that's where that's where the beef is coming from. Right. Okay. So I get that. So that's why there was a little bit next, of hatred between like next storm point. Listen, I didn't told y'all about that. I'm not gonna go no further and expound upon it. Next point. 
<laughs> Storm, Storm did exactly what I wanted her to do. Yeah. Not that I don't have faith in her. That's my niece. I know her bloodline. I know where she come from, and I know what she can do. Yeah. My plan, again, was just like with Jaden. You're going to get in there, and you're going to fight that big broad. Mm-hmm. Win, lose, or draw, she going to remember y'all was in the ring together. Right. And she didn't quit. That's exactly what she did. So, mission was accomplished. We didn't go in there to win. You see, Super Oprah left limping, yeah. had the ice up the old knee. That's exactly what I was about next to say. Time, next, time, next time, she might not be so lucky. She might not be limping up out of there. They might have to stretch her out of there Whoa. if they got one big enough. Whoa. I mean, that's going to be a, it's going to have to be a hefty stretcher. There's no doubt about it. But, I mean, hey, listen, you know, I mean, it was a great match, and yeah, she did leave limping. Super Oprah did leave limping. So I mean, that I, I, you know, we talked about that when we did the review. That could have been a part of the game plan. I mean, so let's go into Sunday then. Casey Clay, Super Oprah. That match also did not work out as far as the win column goes. How did you feel about the match on Sunday? Oh, uh, I, I was a little let down. Because I didn't expect Super Oprah to heal up so fast. I mean, basically, shocked. Basically, Storm went in and did her thing, but somehow Super Oprah must have superpowers of super, super healing because she was ready to go the next. And that's something I wasn't expecting. Right. But now that I know that Big Brother is built for tough and like a talker truck. We'll figure something else out. So you, so this isn't done between Kick Door Promotions and uh, Super Oprah. Oh uh, no, we about to cancel our show. Oh, shit. Wow, I mean that, that network, that network is gonna go off the air, bro. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I mean, you know, I, I listen. I get it. Super Oprah has some questionable, you know. Like you said, sexually her, her, her sexual harassment. I mean, there's interesting things in the matches that people definitely don't forget about. We've Especially seen with the referees too. Referee, yeah, <laughs> yeah ref Nick, referee Nick Varney. I mean, it's been there's been a plenty of victims on that list, but you know, I don't, I mean, know, I don't know how she gets away with it. Denim, if you're watching, you I mean maybe you just got to th- we got to think of something here. Mm-hmm. You know, some type of well, somebody's going to get HR one wrestler going to HR. I mean. <laughs> Thank God wrestling doesn't have well, you know, If you don't do something about it, we been to. I mean. Flat out. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. Super Oprah. Well, I'm, I'm excited to see what comes from, from this, the future for Super Oprah. But before Super Oprah, Casey Clay has a tough opponent in the returning Shauna Reed. Mm-hmm. What's your thoughts on this match, Carl? Well, all I'm going to say is she picked a bad time to come back. Mm. If anybody else wants to know any more about it, you can go to my page on Facebook, Russell Act of Fool Bland, and I've done posted a promo for the match coming up, letting her know what's going on. Yeah. We checked that. We actually watched that right before we started this. It is very good. Go and check. It is on the Battle on the Border Brigade, too, right? Yeah, it should be up over there. Yeah, good I don't know. Them cats be dragging their feet a lot of times. There's a lot of hate that be emanating from that brigade, whoever's in charge of that page. Why do you think and that is? Like, what do you think it is that they, why, why Denim and all these, why, why, why are you the target? Because I'm self-made. Right. I'm not pledging my allegiance to nobody but my people and who I choose to. I'm not kissing nobody's ass to get nowhere. Right. I believe I get what I get off of my own merit. And if I can't get it that way, then I'm going to find another way. And that's when it starts to get a little spooky. Well, I'll tell you this. Very excited to see what happens with Kick Door Promotions here in the future. Is there anything else that you wanted to mention or dive into before we send it again, we don't want to keep the CEO of of, of Kickdoor Promotions too long. I'm sure, you got a lot of busy. You're sure you're a busy man. Is there anything else you wanted to dive into before we uh, send you on your way? Really, you send uh, us on our way. 
Check this. I'm gonna tell y'all like this. As a manager, I show up to the show draped up and dripped out like I'm supposed to be. Kick go promotions. We got all these other wrestlers running away like cheap hosiery. So if we can't join them, we gonna beat them and push our way in. And once we get that done, it ain't no point in anybody else trying to weigh in. We ain't hearing what you're saying. All right, plain and simple. Well, now I got now I got a roll. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I see some. It look like the ops pulling up, man. Uh-huh. I gotta get up out of here. So I might have to holler at y'all later, man. Y'all got all the time y'all gonna get from me. All right. Well, we appreciate it. It's on, man. I'm spinning the block, and I'll holler at y'all when I see y'all. All right, all right. Yeah, that sounds great.